In today's Madden 21 video, I'm going to be breaking down an offense that is resemblant of what Peyton Manning ran in the early 2000s with the Indianapolis Colts, obviously with the Denver Broncos, and one of the offenses that made him so special. So uh, you're in for a treat today. Now, if you've never been to my YouTube channel, my name is Cody, and what I do here is I post Madden 21 tips and tricks, both on the offensive and on the defensive side of the ball every single day. I post at 2 o'clock, at 4 o'clock, at 6 o'clock, and at 8 o'clock p.m. Eastern Time. And I also live stream where you can ask your Madden questions live and play me in Madden every night at 10 o'clock p.m. Eastern Time. So if that is something that interests you, if you're looking to get better at this game, I would highly encourage you to go ahead and click the subscribe button at the bottom right hand corner of your screen. All right, guys, so I am a huge fan of the Peyton Manning offense. And um, unfortunately, with the way Madden works this year, some of the plays that they put in the game, it's kind of hard to emulate this specific type of offense without a couple of things first and foremost you need the new england patriots playbook in my opinion that's the best playbook that i have found to emulate some of the routes and some of the concepts that the colts would would run the second thing that i think you need um, in order to emulate this offense is you need some kind of route chemistry on your slot receiver so you need a slot apprentice or you need a hot route master in my opinion uh, in Mutt, I use a slot apprentice, an outside apprentice, and a tight end apprentice. So um, you could make the argument that Hot Route Master is, is just as good and go with a passing to lead on the Hot Route Master, but I just really value the gunslinger ability. So we're going to roll with what we have here. But uh, in practice mode, um, you can obviously, if you're running in regs, in my opinion, the best team to use this offense with is the Bucks, just because of the fact that Brady has Hot Route Master. It's really the only reason. Um, and Chris Godwin has slot omatic. Um, if you wanted to use another team, you would have to find the slot apprentice for this to be able to work because some of the core concepts of the Colts offense really based around how their slot receiver and their tight end play. And unfortunately, you just can't create all of those different types of routes without that ability. So um, I think doubles flex is the best way to run this uh, scheme. Now, this isn't exactly the formation they would use. You would often see New England using uh, shotgun doubles, which I'm in mean, the Patriots books. You can use shotgun doubles as well. Some of these concepts I'm going to show you will work from doubles Y flex. The reason I'm using doubles flex is for a couple of specific routes that are in that formation that aren't in this shotgun doubles. The other thing is you want to be able to audible down into these two sets right here, single back doubles, and you want to use the play stretch. Now the Colts didn't really run a whole lot of power. Oh, but, um, we're going to use it because it's just very effective in Madden. And then obviously PA double post is a big play for them. Um, and then I would say probably put in their uh, Z post out or the bubble screen, whichever one you want. You'd really want to be able to run this Z close uh, series of plays right here, these three plays. But unfortunately, it's an obvious tell because it motions the guy inside. Um, so I just I, I would personally um, just stay with Z post Y out here and kind of do everything based off of your hot routes with that slot apprentice. Um, now, why, from Y trips, you want to use the stretch, and then if you can find an inside zone, I don't think they have one in here, unfortunately, so I would just use Power O again, um, and then obviously PA stretch or PA boot right, either one of those two uh, will work. We're going to basically use hot routes to kind of create some of these concepts. Um, this is going to be a multi-part series, so I'm actually really excited to break this down, but uh, we're going to start with kind of their, their bread and butter play here in just a moment. But you can certainly use things like single back ace slot, single back ace close, some of these plays. Unfortunately, the New England book doesn't have like single back ace, which I was really hoping it would, but it, it doesn't. Um, but it does have a lot of other things that you could use. So you're going to spend the majority of your time in this gun doubles wide flex formation. I think this is the best way to kind of emulate uh, what, they, what they would run. And so we're going to jump in right here. The first play we're going to start with, is um, in my opinion their best play the play that they run the best which is under y option we're actually going to turn this into uh, levels divide which um, if you've never used if you've never used a levels concept before um, it's it's fairly simple in how it works it's been my favorite passing concept for years in madden but uh, anyway let's jump right here so under y choice and we're just going to back the ball up here just a little bit um, so that we can get a little bit more space on our field uh, to show you this stuff and how this is going to work from in, inside the 20s. Now, 
it doesn't really matter what hash you're on. I would say, you know, if you if you could choose, you would want to be on the left hash for this play. But um, it doesn't really matter um, in terms of how everything's going to work. I mean, yeah, it's going to work a little bit differently, but it's not going to work like it's not going to be like a crazy. You're going to notice that your routes aren't going to get open as a result, or they are going to get open. You know, it, I, I wouldn't say it's going to be a super, super crazy difference. Um, the core concept is going to work um, as is. So anyways, all we're going to do with this as far as uh, adjustments go is we're going to put our slot receiver on a post route. Now, if you don't have a slot omatic receiver, you can put him on an in route, um, just smart route it. But the problem with that is you can only run that on first and 10. You can't run that on second and five or you know third and one you wouldn't be able to do this what you would have to do is just probably stick with the way that it is stock or just put him on a curl route if you didn't have the other routes to be able to put him on the field i personally love putting him on a post route i think that works best and um you know that's what we're going to teach here at this channel but i want to read you a little bit of a description here and we're going to go over to the computer screen i just want to read you this right here this is this is levels and there's more on this but um, this was an article that I, I read. This was actually probably, gosh, I don't know how many years ago it was written. Um, you can't even find it on the Internet anymore. You have to have like a direct link. So if you want the direct link for this, um, just shoot me a text message. Uh, it's the best breakdown that I've ever seen um, in terms of, of the, the Colts offense. And I've, re I've searched hot, far and wide for like resources on this and I haven't found a ton on the Internet. But I just love the way Manning would run the offense. He was running a lot of, um, I think they called it the K-Gun. But the other thing that Manning was doing that I thought was so powerful was it was a simple playbook, and it was um, something that you could do uh, relatively, not only simple, but relatively fast. So a lot of no huddle, and um, I just thought it was really, really um, sad. So here's the description. Um, it's shocking how often the Colts run this play, and it's true. They run this play several, several, several times a game. Um, very simple play that puts a high-low strain on the underneath zone defender who is second from the outside in a cover two. So you see second from the outside. So it's not this corner. This is the guy that they're putting the strain on right here. Okay. Um, usually the outside linebacker is sometimes a nickel player. But what makes the play even more intriguing is the Colts typically packaged it with a basic, basic curl flat concept to the other side. As was the case with the quick slants shown above in this single play, Manny would identify the coverage by looking at the number of safeties. If there were two deep safeties, he could work this side right here. Okay. If there were, um, uh, let me, if he he could work this, if there was two deep safeties, if there was only one deep safety, he could work the curl flat combination to the other side. So that's on this side right here. And with the tight end or slot running the seam route, which is a big deal, he could work. The curl flat combination to the other and with the tight end running the slot or the seam the curl flat combination was also the best option against the cover four because the cover four would take that safety out of the play and leave a one-on-one -on -one matchup over here with this basic curl flat concept okay so uh this other article on this uh really quickly here i just want to cover this so you can see this um both peyton and tom moore have both stated their favorite pass route is one in many coaching circles are known as levels the Colts have their own own unique lingo, but Levels gives you the gist. Most other pro teams use it too, including the Patriots, but no one does it as well or as often as the Indianapolis Colts. At the college level, Oklahoma State, Mike Gundy, and Arkansas, at this time Bobby Petrino was a coach, both use this concept with some regularity. And you might have heard the name before, June Jones has a three-man version of Levels for uh, Hawaii and SMU at the time. The concept is simple. The outside receiver runs a 5-yard in route. The slot receiver or tight end runs a 10-12-yard to 12 yard square in with a slightly outside release. On the back side, the Colts have the outside guy run or take off or sometimes a comeback at 18 yards. And the backside slot or tight end runs a divide route or a seam read as we explained in the previous breakdown. Okay. The quarterback begins, and this is, this is where I'm going to talk about the reads of this play. The quarterback begins by peaking or getting an alert read of the divide route. So that's the first read. The first read's not going to be our uh, levels concept. The first read's actually going to be our tight end seam, just to kind of see what the coverage is. It's a peak read. You're just looking to see what, you know, in air raid terminology, it'll be, we're looking to see if the grass is there, right? If that route comes open or the safeties get out of position, the quarterback throws the ball on rhythm at the end of his drop for a big play. If it's not, he gets into his normal progression. 
Unlike most passing concepts, which are read deep to short, this play is actually read short to deep. Um, and so what you'll see here, but the philosophy of the play is to throw the five-yard in route whenever it comes open. They want to treat it like stealing yards to get the ball into the playmaker. Traditionally, that was Marvin Harrison, and more recently, you'll see Reggie, Ray Reggie Wayne running this type of route. If the defense comes up for the quick in route, the quarterback looks for the square in behind him. In other words, this is a two-man, high-low, or vertical stretch concept which puts underneath defenders in a bind with the guy in front and behind them. More specifically, this play is designed to attack cover two, and one of the great common routes against cover two is the smash, smash play, which is a great route against that coverage. And in that play, the outside receiver, and you'll see in the diagram right here, runs a five-yard hitch. The inside guy runs a corner route at 12 yards, and this puts that cornerback in the cover two who's responsible for the flat um, and a high-low bind. Smash has been a go-to play for years, but it's so common that safeties and inside defenders have learned to kind of overplay the route. That's where this levels concept comes from. And if we lay the smash and the levels concepts on top of one another, we see that the play develops, the defense will not be able to tell the difference between them, and finally at the last minute the receivers will break unexpectedly. So the first thing you get with these two plays is the advantage of destroying pattern reading by making your routes look alike, right? This is something that I, um, I actually hold on to a lot. You have to make everything look the same. You have to make your offense look the same, just like you have to make your defense look the same. And if everything looks the same, but they're going in different directions, that's an absolute massive advantage for your offense because the defense can't overplay it. And uh, and you're going to see what that, that's going to look like here in just a second. So let's look at who the play is designed to attack in cover two, the outside linebacker nickelback over the slot. Coaches refer to him as the quote-unquote number two. In smash, the play is designed to attack the corner. So if he's going to get help, it's likely going to come from the inside defender. In the diagram below, we can see how that player is affected. If he stays home to attack the quick in, the square in comes in behind him. So if this wiggle back, right, if we're running smash, right, and that corner is thinking he's going to take this corner route right here, then what's going to happen is this wiggle back is going to take this in route. So the nickel back may take the in route, but what's going to happen is this guy's no longer running a corner. He's running a square in, so he has leverage now, and you can hit this to the inside. In the diagram below, we can see how that player is affected. If he stays at home, if he drops back to follow the slot man who releases vertically, which is often what he's taught to do and most defenses will do, then you're going to hit the little five-yard in. The last thing is if the middle linebacker zone um, defender in a true cover two flows over to take away either the square in or the quick in, think of this as their user defender, okay? then the quarterback will just drop it off to the running back underneath. Now, the other way this play works well is against man. In that case, um, the outside receiver will try to run his route underneath the slot man such that he will get a natural rub, not a pick, right? But should come, come right open in the quarterback's vision. This is a five-wide version of levels from, from five-wide, which we can get into another time. But, um, but anyway, let's just jump back over here, and I want to show you how this play works in Madden now. So basically what we want to do and the, the theory here is we want to lay two concepts on top of one another. We want to lay smash on top of this, okay? So smash would be just running a corner route instead of running a post route, okay? So we want to lay smash on top of this. We also want to be able to um, obviously have a tight end seam read, right? So for this, we're just going to put him on a deep streak. Um, you can, if you want to, put him on a post if you have a hot route master but more than likely i think a streak will work best for the whole um of the play and then what we're going to do is kind of stick with that simple curl flat concept so miller's going on a curl and then mccoy's going to go on a little block and release route to the left side now what you'll see about how this play works is against man-to-man -man coverage you're going to see mike evans should get open coming underneath now if he doesn't get open um and we're talking press man-to-man -man coverage. Against off coverage, he'll come open pretty much every single time. But we're talking against press man-to-man -man coverage. If he doesn't come open, you can hit your post. But most of the time, you're going to hit Mike Evans in man-to-man -man coverage. If they're just playing straight man, you're going to hit either Mike Evans or you're going to hit your post route. Or you could hit your backside curl route. But you'll see here, Chris Godwin with that slot matic he's going to get instant separation against man-to-man -man coverage. Now, if they're running a lot of press coverage on you, um, you can try to test them deep if you want to um, and leave Gronk on his route and run Miller deep. You could do that if you want to. But I would recommend just staying, keeping it really, really simple. 
Um, you'll see here you get that nice inside release uh, on cover two man with Chris Godwin in that slot receiver position. So you're going to be able to beat press man. Uh, and then real quick, if they're using that side, most of the time they will use her the tight end. Um, but if they do use her that, that uh, left side, then you can easily hit this little curl route. You just need to make sure that you come back to the ball and aggressive catch it. Now, if they run cover two, this is where it's going to become, you know, ideal. I, this play is ideal against cover two. Uh, but basically in cover two, if you see this right here, you're going to throw that tight end streak up the seam. If that middle linebacker does not go to the deep blue or they don't chase that, they don't chase that tight end up the seam, then that's where you're going to go. Okay. So most cover twos, they're not going to be able to stop the tight end just with their stock setup, right? Right there, you know you can hit that route, so you just take it. Um, it's just a simple inside pass lead, and you're hitting that against cover two. Let me show you this one more time so that you can get a good grasp of what happens if they don't go with the tight end. If they don't go with the tight end, that middle linebacker is not going to chase. He's not going to go with the ball. So what that means that they're going to have to do is if they're, if they're going to go with the tight end, then they're going to have to do this. They're going to have to put their um, – their, their linebacker is going to have to go into a middle read zone. Or not a middle read zone, a middle third zone. So now you'll see, okay, they back up. Okay, from that point, once they start to turn their back and go, that's when you want to come back to this other side. So if you start to see, if they kind of go with the tight end at the snap of the ball, you know, maybe their user, oftentimes i found this is going to pull their user up the seams. That's what I've actually found more, than, more often than not is because a lot of people are going to run Mabel coverage with the way Madden works this year. So by having, um, by having this, this seam, seam route right at the middle, that's going to take their user completely out of the middle of the field um, or just completely out of the play. So you'll see right here, okay, he's going to go. I can hit this backside post or I can hit this backside in route. Both are going to come open. And the thing with cover two is the backside um, in route to Mike Evans will always be open against cover two. If they're running cover two of any type, you'll see right here, that is always going to be there for you. You can always hit that in route right on the cut, right when he comes underneath there. And this is a route that you would have seen uh, Peyton Manning complete over and over and over again if you go back and watch Colts uh, game tape. So you see right here, just drives across right in that little pocket. And um, that's going to be a good, consistent read. So that's cover two. Now, one thing I do want to talk about from a cover two perspective is what if uh, they do something like this? And thinking through that their user, maybe they put their deep blue out there, right? And now their user is going to come down onto the, uh, the route to the, to the back. Uh, what you can see is late. There's a couple things that are going to come open on the back side if they over pursue uh, at that degree. So the first thing that's going to come open um, is if they do that, and this is going to mean they're going to be dropping at least eight people, right? They're going to be dropping at least eight people. But what you'll notice is they go up the seam here, and then they're going to, let's just say they take away that little dig. You'll see that this route to Chris Godwin is going to get over the top um, of every zone coverage, or most zone coverages people are going to run. So if they're running a standard cover two on that side, um, they're going to have to Mabel coverage on that on that right side. Um, and even more, they're going to have to do more than that. But this right side is so powerful this year. And so if you have time in the pocket and you can wait for this to come open, this post route to Chris Goblin, once it clears the vertical hook zones, um, is going to be wide open for you. And what's nice is this progression works um, as a flow. It's a, it's not, they're not going to stop, right? They're going to keep flowing um, within this place. So what you'll see here now is, is if I wanted to work this curl flat concept, you'll notice that that route's wide open for Scotty Miller as well because most people are going to be putting their flat zones on uh, 5 to 10 yards to take away those flat passes. So then what people are going to have to do is they're going to have to go to something like this, and this is what you're going to see a lot more of depending on the player that you're play facing. You're going to see more of this. This is Mabel coverage with that user in the middle of the field, and this is what this play becomes. This play destroys this. Um, you've got your tight end read. If that's not open, one of these two middle receivers are going to be wide open. The other route that's going to be wide open against Mabel coverage is actually going to be your curl route on the backside because 
what most people are going to do is they're going to drop their Mabel coverage um, at 20 to 25 yards with their purples and at uh, 5 to 10 yards with their with their uh, route to the other player. So what you'll see here is I could just hit that low ball uh, curl route right in the middle of that uh, right in the middle of that zone defense. Okay, so that is levels um, as far as that. Now, what are they going to do to try to take this away? What are they going to do to try to take this away? Well, oftentimes what people are going to basically try to do is they're going to try to take this away with their user defender. Okay, so they may do something like this. Maybe they take their, um, maybe they take this this guy right here, Amos, and they're going to drop him into a, a hook curl. Maybe they drop that uh, that coverage right there to Savage. This guy's going to be their user, so we'll show this at a hook curl. Like this would be something that they could realistically try to do to take this away. And what you have to understand is levels is not meant to be ran every play. It can be ran most plays, and you'll see here it's still going to come open. You see, I can still hit this route to Mike Evans, right? Now, if they start to get really aggressive with their cross manning, which this is something that I could see them doing, um, specifically out of dime 146, because oftentimes out of dime 146, this linebacker or this guy is going to be blitzing, right? So what I could see is them doing something like that and then taking this guy, manning him up on, on, on these guys over here and basically doing a cross man treatment uh, within this. And then effectively they've got this guy you know, kind of doing some man coverage, basically, but essentially, you know, blitzing out of man, man, um, to try to stop this. And so what you'll notice here is cross banning is not going to help them. You'll still be able to hit that route. Now the pressure comes off really, really nicely out of dime 146, but you will be able to get the ball out and will be able to get the ball um, to somebody quick. Now, what we're going to show you in our next video is we're going to show you Kind of the next play in the series of of plays if you know really what this play is designed to do is it's designed to beat every coverage in the game and so when you get in a position where you want to establish something or once you get them in a position where they have to play honest meaning they have to just play good old honest football that's where this is going to really shine now uh, as far as cover three goes uh, what I like about this is you can actually hit this tight end seam read. Um, this tight end streak is really, really good. If the safety's on the left side, which he most of the time is, right, because um, most of the time the, the cover three is going to be auto flipped to the to the slot receiver side, right, this route right here is going to be, um, and I, I threw it just a little bit too early right there, but this route's going to be really, really good for you. It's a tight throw. Um, they don't oftentimes, especially because they're so concerned about what's going on on this backside, most of the time they don't use her this throw. So it's just like straight up right in that little pocket. And, um, I need to, I need to wait just a little bit longer, but let me just show you what I'm looking at here. But this tight end route, if they go to cover three, um, right there, that's what we're looking at. That little streak right up the seam will put a lot of stress on their cover three. And what that's going to do is it's going to force them to have to flip their cover three, which they don't want to do that, okay? And the reason they don't want to do that is because that's going to put them at a disadvantage on the left side now. Because of the roll coverage, he's going to roll, and then you can hit that route to Chris Godwin. So the cover, that, that, that seam read becomes really, really valuable as your first read. If you can hit that tight end streak, um, if they're playing undisciplined defense, right? If they're not having that manned up or they're not having a vert hook or they're not having something on that side, then you can really work people, I mean, work the ball down the field. And don't ever forget the fact that you have this curl flat read. And so part of this is I'm looking middle, right, left, and now back to this curl. And that progression has to be that quick. I mean, it has to be within three seconds you've read the defense and you're trying to make a read, right? So literally, let me just talk you through my progressions here. I'm looking tight end, nope, backside, nope. And then play side, and yep, yeah, I can hit that. Okay, so that's really what we're looking at. And the biggest mistake that I make is oftentimes when I look at someone for too long. Whenever I stare receivers down, that's when I get in trouble. And so, in order to prevent that, I'm going to go ahead and bounce my progressions, try to keep that t mental timer of quick glance, quick glance, quick glance, quick glance, not trying to necessarily just stare down receivers. If you can get away from staring down receivers, um, it's going to make your offense that much better. But this is the levels concept. This is where it all starts for the Colts, in my opinion. Um, this is the early 2000s. I hope you enjoyed this video. I think this was written in 2009. 
This was one of the first videos or articles that I ever read about passing in the NFL. And I thought this was such a good article. So hopefully you enjoyed this. If you have any questions about this, let me know. If you have any suggestions about uh, what type of like real NFL offenses you'd like me to study, um, I would love to hear those suggestions. Um, the other thing I wanted to say really quickly before we take off is if you have not joined my text message membership yet, it is completely free to join that. And what that text message membership gets you is every single week we break down an entire offensive or defensive scheme um, for you for free and we send it to you. The videos are typically about 45 minutes to an hour long. Um, we've covered the Carolina gun bunch. We've covered the trips uh, or the big nickel over G. We've covered the gun cluster, uh, a slot offset, and we'll be covering a new one every single week. So we'll have a new offense as well this week. This last week, we just did the gun Y off trips paths formation. So a lot of really, really good material. So if you have questions about that or you want to sign up for that, just shoot me a text. My number is 812 216 3644. You can also find it in the description of this video as well as in the top left corner of the screen of most of my videos. Um, but anyways, uh, just shoot me a text. Let me know you'd like to receive those videos and I'll shoot those your way. Thank you guys so much for your time and we will see you guys in our next video coming here in a little bit.